Ladies and gentlemen, we are in chapter 6. And this is a very useful chapter uh, talking about similarity. So let's figure out how to use similar polygons. Polygons, you'll remember, is many sides. So a polygon can be a triangle, it can be a quadrilateral, a pentagon, all kinds of different things are included in this uh, term of polygons. And our essential question is, how do I use proportions to identify similar polygons? Now, you know this word similar. First of all, we're uh, accustomed to congruent. Remember the symbol for congruent? It's an equal sign with a squiggle on top. And our statement for congruent was, probably should go ahead and write that here, <clears throat> same, same shape. same size. Okay, remember that? For congruence, it was same shape, same size. But now we're looking at the idea of similarity. We've talked about this already. And in similarity, our little statement then is same shape, so same as uh, with congruent, but their proportional size. In the past, I've said different size. Let's say proportional size. So you can see these two dudes here, or maybe they're girls, I'm not sure, but uh, they are not congruent, obviously, but we are told that they are similar. That's just one squiggle, as opposed to congruence has a squiggle and an equal sign. Similar is just one squiggle. And so these two shapes, being told that they are similar tells us that, yeah, I can see they have the same shape and their uh, size, though, is proportional. So what does that mean, proportional? Well, <clears throat> when you take two numbers and relate them according or relate them with division, remember a, a fraction bar, you think of the operation, mathematical operation of division, that is a ratio. So we can even put a, a circle around that. Okay, a ratio is two numbers related through division. A proportion is when you set two ratios equal to each other. So the sides are proportional. And let's go over and look at the example. Probably the best, easiest way to communicate this to you. Let me raise it up here on the books. Hopefully you can still see it and it's uh, clear uh, for you. So here's an example <clears throat> uh, here. They're telling us that these two triangles are, there's one squiggle there, so what does that mean? They're telling us that it, they are similar. <clears throat> and what does it mean that they're similar? It means that they have the same shape, same shape, but proportional sizes. Sides? Yeah, <laughs> proportional size. And specifically, that the, uh, the ratio of the corresponding sides uh, is the same for all of them. And that's what we mean by proportional. So um, in, oh, actually I didn't, did not finish that up, did I, over here. That in a uh, similar polygons, the corresponding angles are congruent. So, no. <laughs> Push this out of the way. Sorry, kind of messing this up here. Going too far. I jumped ahead. Should just need to slow back. Um, so corresponding angles. Push this out of the way. Corresponding angles here, angle A and angle E, are congruent with each other. But to ratio the sides, uh, corresponding sides, are proportional with each other. So corresponding angles, A and E are congruent, D and K are congruent, C and G are congruent, and so forth. Those angles, corresponding angles, are congruent, but then the corresponding sides are proportional. Okay, so let me see if I can show that to you in this particular situation. So we are told that these two triangles are similar so, therefore, angle R is, con well, let's, hold on, hold on. Uh, before we jump into it and just assume that the bottom left angles are corresponding to each other, let's look at the sides. 
We are told that they're similar, the two triangles are similar, but they might not be in the same orientation. So let's make sure that they are in the correct orientation. So looking at this triangle, this side is the smallest side, and then going around clockwise goes to medium length of side, and then long side. So small, medium, large, going around from the bottom, going around clockwise. Now, is this other triangle in the same orientation? Well, here's 12, 15, and 18, yep. So the smallest is on the bottom, and going around clockwise goes from small, medium, and large. Okay, so we have confirmed that not only are we told that these two triangles are similar, but also they are in the same orientation. Therefore, angle R does correspond to angle X, and because they're similar, therefore these two uh, angles, corresponding angles, are congruent. And then same thing with angle T and Z, they are congruent, and angles S and Y are congruent. And that's what they're saying down here. Now, what does this deal with proportional? What we're saying then is that, how do they do it here? Okay, let's take the bottom. That uh, this side, the length of this side, over the length of this side, uh, 20 over 12 is equal to the same ratio. So if I take 20 over 12, and then I reduce that down to, uh, what would I do? What's the common factor between 20 and 12? I guess it's four, right? Yeah, so I divide top and bottom by four, and I would get a scale factor or ratio of five over three. And so I did big over small, and so if I take two corresponding sides and do big over small, uh, so 25 over 15, and if I was to reduce that 25 over 15, and what is my scale factor, or my, my uh, common denominator, no, not common denominator, uh, common factor, here it is, is a 5 between those two, so 25 divided by 5 is 5, 15 divided by 5 is 3, and notice that I have the same ratio. And then I would get the same answer also if I was to do 30 over 18, big over small, 30 over 18, and if I was to reduce that, I would get the same ratio. So therefore, corresponding sides have the same ratio and the sides are proportional. That's what we're saying. So knowing that two polygons are similar is very, very helpful. So you are ready now for number one in your notes. And uh, given that uh, triangle JKL, JKL, and did I want to include that triangle? And I don't remember. I don't think so. Let me assume, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, there you go. Um, so <laughs> if you want to, you can include that. You can just create a triangle, make a big triangle and create a small triangle and uh, J, K, L, and I will let you decide how you want to uh, label the smaller triangle. I'm just throwing down a triangle here, but just to help to visualize what we're doing, I'll let you label these points uh, with these um, letters in the same corresponding order. And then they're asking, for you to label all the pairs of congruent angles. In other words, angle J is congruent to which angle in this other triangle. And you will remember that the order is the issue. So the first angle here is congruent to the first angle in the other one. And then also write ratios of the corresponding side lengths. So similar to these uh, ratios uh, here, uh, make sure that you do the same kind of ratio over here. So we would say, for example, uh, J, K. Uh, yeah, yep. So J, K is or corresponds to uh, this side over here. And that's going to equal 
the same ratio as KL over what, um, here's KL over here on the right hand side. And so what, are, what is the side on your other triangle? Uh, equal to, and what would it be, LK? Yeah, I think so, coming around the bottom here. Uh, no, I'm sorry, LJ, yep, LJ. So you fill in what sides of this other triangle you need to put in to create these proportions. Okay, hope that's helpful to you. Go ahead and pause the video and uh, do that. Now, I mentioned the word scale factor. Uh, scale factor, uh, if two polygons are similar, then the ratio of the lengths of the two corresponding sides is called scale factor. We are accustomed to scale factor. Remember uh, 9.7, no, no, which is on the midway down on your notes that start out with 9.6. But 9.7, when, when we're doing dilations, we identified or defined the scale factor as new over old, new over old. That same principle is true. And also, remember with a dilation, if the scale factor is less than one, then it's a reduction. If the scale factor is greater than one, then it is, it is an enlargement. So we're gonna use that same principle here that uh, the ratio between two corresponding sides is called your scale factor. So let's look at uh, two examples here in the textbook. Here we go. And we are told that these two triangles are uh, similar. That's what that symbol means, as you know. And therefore, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's do number two first. <laughs> So we're told that these two, oh no, we're asked to determine whether or not these two polygons are similar. Well, if they are similar, then not only will the corresponding angles be congruent, okay, and they are, we just confirmed that, but also corresponding sides will be proportional. In other words, they'll have the same ratio. So let's set this up. And what they do is they say 25 over 20. So they're saying 25, so big over small. And that is equal to uh, 5 over 4, if you were to reduce it. So that would be your scale factor. Let's see, uh, let's confirm though, that we get the same scale factor when, you, when, when we use other corresponding signs. So let's do 30 over 24. And if we were to do that ratio, we could reduce it down to 5 over 4. And then let's do 15 over 12. See these corresponding sides? And we're, remember, we're doing the same pattern, big over small, in this particular uh, situation. So 15 over 12 gives us also 5 over 4 if we were to reduce that. And then 20 over 16. Those correspond to each other, big over small and that would give us the same uh, ratio. So notice that when it's the same ratio, okay, that is our scale factor then, and or because it's the same ratio, therefore these two polygons are similar and the scale factor between these two um, polygons uh, is, or these two similar polygons, is five over four, going from big to small. If we were to say it in a different way and say the, the uh, uh, scale factor going from small to big, it would actually be four over five. Okay, so it does matter which direction that you're going in. Now, these, this a concept of similarity is so helpful because it enables us to be able to find missing side lengths. So in this case, we're told that these two triangles are similar and so therefore, let's make sure they're in the same orientation. So here is 9 and 12 going from small to big. 12 to 16, yep, going small to bigger. Okay, so let's assume that these are in the, the correct orientation. And in order to find the value of x, since we know that similar triangles, similar polygons, will have the same shape, 
and proportional sides, therefore we can set up a proportion. And the easiest way that I know to do it is to start out with the variable that you want. I want x. Now what side in the other triangle, other polygon, corresponds to x? And it's 20. So x over 20 equals, and now let's find two sides that we know the length of. So let's use uh, 9. We're going again from small to big. We started with the x, so small to big. Therefore, we need to keep that same orientation and go small to big. And let's use 9 and 12 because these two sides correspond to each other. So now we have our proportion. x over 20 equals 9 over 12. And you know that we can solve proportions by doing cross multiplication. So 12 times x, 12 times x equals 9 times 20. And 9 times 20 is 180. And I could uh, simplify or solve for uh, x by dividing both sides by 12. And now I get x equals 15. So that allows me to solve for this unknown side. And notice I used uh, 9, what did I use? Uh, 9 over 12. Yeah, they go. I use these two sides, 9 over 12. Well, I can also do it with uh, these two sides, uh, 12 over 16. So I'm taking the same x over 20 that we had, these two corresponding sides, the unknown over this other corresponding side. But instead of using 9 over 12, I can use 12 over 16. So I'm using this other pair of signs. And just to show you, I end up with the same answer, x equals 15. Okay, so proportions or uh, similarity between shapes and being able to create proportions is extremely helpful. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and have you now uh, do these two exercises. And I've set up number two for you. They're asking for the scale factor. And remember, scale factor is new over old. And so let's, in our case, since we're not really uh, necessarily going from one to another. Oh, no, actually, hold on. They do tell us. They, they say uh, QRST. Where is QRST? Here is QRST. QRST is here. And so we're going from small to big. So in our case, we could do it this way. We could say small over big because we're going from small too big. So let's just extend this over here. And now you put what, uh, and, and uh, so grab two corresponding sides that have uh, numbers. You could either do 6 over 12 or 8 over 16 uh, or 5 over 10. And then simplify that uh, uh, fraction, that ratio, until you get the uh, a simplified a number which will be your scale factor. Okay, does not matter which one of those you use. And then you want to find the value of x. So here is x. So my recommendation is you start out with x on top and then what side corresponds to x and your other um, side, your other, other polygon. And equals and then since we're going in this case uh, with x is on the bigger one big to small, then make sure that your numbers over here are also big over small. So if you're going to say x over 4, then make sure that you say either that equals either 10 over